Hey YouTube, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a progress bar application in Visual Basic. It's going to be using buttons, progress bar and a timer. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go on to Microsoft Visual Basic 2005 Express Edition. We want to open that up, wait for it to load. Um, and once it's loaded you should get a start tab as you'll see here. You can close the start tab, it's just the Visual Basic News type of thing because it's the start tab, press close, um, and uh, now we're going to open a new project, so control uh, N or file new, it wants to be, we want it to be a Windows application, and then name it, whatever you want, so we're going to name it progress bars, click OK, and wait for it to load, now it may take some loading time depending on how quick your computer is and how much it's got to configure, as you'll see it's taking a bit of time here, um, but it shouldn't take that long, uh, it shouldn't take too long, and there we go, we can see our form, our Windows form. So it's starting to look like an application already. You can resize it to whatever size you're hoping for for whatever application you're designing. Um, so that size looks good. So now on the side, you'll see toolboxes. If you can't see that, go to View Toolbars uh, and click on Toolbox. So now we're going to enter buttons. We're going to enter a start and a stop button. So enter two buttons. Um, and we want to enter a progress bar as well. That's what we need. Click on progress bar, click inside the form, and resize it to the si size that you want, the size you wish. And we also need a timer. Now if we click inside, you'll see there isn't anything in the box, but if you go down, you'll see it's down there on a tab below because it's not, it's not a visible kind of thing, but it's working in the background. Now we'll go to properties on the right hand side on the bottom, and uh, on text, click uh, on text, we want start for that button. Now we will highlight button 2, go down to properties again, go into the text and we want it to be called stop. Uh, press enter and there we go. And as you'll see the form at the top, the title is form 1. We don't really want that so we'll change it to progress bars, progress bar dot dot. Um, press enter and as you can see the title has now changed. Um, now for getting onto the code, this is the slightly more complicated bit. Um, but still fairly easy. Double click on the start button and you should see this pops up, form one, instead of just form one uh, in design. And you've got a private sub for button one. So now what we need to type inside pri the private sub, sub sorry, is if button one dot enabled equals true, then timer one dot enabled equals true. Sorry about that, true, getting violent. Um, uh, timer1.enabled equals true. We go back to the design tab and as you can see that's named timer1 and that is named button1 in the properties. That's called timer1. So if so basically you can change the names so but basically it's saying if you press the start button button1 then the timer is going to be enabled. Now we want to go onto the timer1 at private sub um, the, the sub um, in the code and we want to write if timer1.enabled equals true, then uh, progress bar one dot enabled um, equals true. So that means the progress bar will be um, enabled if the timer is enabled and the timer will be enabled when you press button one. Um, now we press enter and we want to go uh, if, oh no sorry, progress bar one dot increment uh, open brackets one, close brackets. Uh, this is basically the amount um, of time it's going to take. Press play and we're going to press start and here's our application as you can see it's starting but if we press the stop button nothing's happening. If we press the start button nothing's happening either. Now that's because we haven't programmed the stop button. Double click on the stop button, go into the private sub for that and go uh, and as you'll see, if we write if button two dot enabled equals true, so if button two is clicked, if the stop button's clicked uh, equals true, then progress bar one dot enabled, oh sorry, enabled um, equals false. Uh, then progress bar. So, but if you just write that, you accept um, it. It's not going to stop. It's not um, the progress bar is not going to stop, and that is because the timer is still enabled. Um, so we're going to change this to then if button 2.enabled equals true, then timer 1.enabled equals false. 
And then we're going to have another one, which is the same as the one we originally had. If button 2 dot enabled equals true, then well, progress uh, bar 1 dot enabled equals false. And that means that you're closing off the timer before you close off the progress bar. So as you'll see, it's running. If we press stop, it should now successfully stop. If you press start again, it should successfully continue running. Stop, start. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have fun designing in Visual Basic. More video tutorials coming up soon.